I mean, I'm going to decide which upsets me the most. <laughs> um, but, but this is important why. I mean, it, first of all, when we're in utero, yeah. uh, at the moment of conception, right. at the, when the first cell divides, the information for what we are is in there, but a microscopic, but we are neuter then? Actually, we are neuter. We all look the same. And in fact, the only thing that's going to make me become a boy and someone out there become a girl is that I have a Y chromosome which does nothing until I'm a six-week-old embryo. At six weeks, that converts my gonad, which normally, in the normal course of events, would become an ovary. It should be an ovary. But it becomes a testicle because my Y chromosome directs it to become a testicle. At that point, my testicle secretes two hormones, and those two hormones change everything. Without that testicle, I would have to develop as a female. The normal, neutral course of development of embry any embryo is to become a female. So we're all girls. We're all girls. Starting off. Starting off. What happens is at six... We just got this, this young woman in the second row who's fascinated by this. We, we're not going to, it's not likely she's going to leave us. Uh, at six weeks right, of age, ahead, right. six weeks of age, the hormones of the testicle direct are what would have been a fallopian tube, a uterus, and a vagina to shrivel up into what you saw there in that man's penis and uh, uh, directs the, um, the clitoris, or the genital tubercle we call it, to enlarge into a penis. And if we don't have the testicle secreting those two hormones called, uh, called myth factor and called testosterone, then we would normally develop, despite having XY chromosomes, into females, normal females. So then so that uh, at five weeks gestation, mm -hmm. all, of the, all of the architectural material for either sex, uh, for, for the female is there. Right. Okay. And what determines whether, the, whether uh, a certain part of the anatomy grows into a penis or shrinks into a clitoris or whether a gonad becomes an ovary is hormones. Right. Exactly. And the hormones are determined by the presence of a Y chromosome? Right. I knew that. <laughs> Isn't that something? Now, so what? Now, why? Uh, what's in it for us to know this? Well, there are a lot of children that are born with what we call ambiguous genitalia. We call them intersex cases. And in these kids, uh, the, they, they didn't go through a complete restructuring from female to male. They have all the normal XY chromosomes, but something went wrong. And they did not develop completely structurally and, and you can't tell when they're born whether it's a big clitoris or a small penis or whether it's a, a small a big urethra or a small vagina you say this is a wide uh, a malformed genitalia is a very serious problem and the reason we don't know about it is because obviously it's usually people, kept secret you see this in your practice oh certainly a lot and what has been done to these children to help them has given us enormous biologically valid scientific information about what determines a person's sense of whether he's a boy or a girl, what causes transsexuality, and what causes homosexuality. Not retrospective reviews from questionnaires, yeah. which can only lead to more confusion, but a real study of how these little boys or girls with ambiguous genitalia, how they're reared, and how they grow up and what they decide they are, whether but, they're boys or girls or not. But if the hormone is determining which sex you become in the sixth week inside your mother's womb, and if, you're all, if, if everybody's got the, uh, the blueprint for femaleness there right. that's changed according to, given that information, we shouldn't be surprised that sex is not, is not an absolutely either John Wayne or Bo Derek situation. That's right. Yeah, that's that, that there'll be, sh some people will uh, display lots of what we, society calls macho tendencies, others, but it doesn't necessarily have any, those changes don't necessarily mean sex preference either. Oh, they definitely don't. I mean, you, uh, uh, the majority of homosexuals do not have effeminate mannerisms, do not appear effeminate. Uh, probably the majority of transsexuals don't either. Despite an intense desire of the transsexual male uh, to be a female, uh, he hides it. He could be a football player. 
he could uh, he could be a policeman. You are also saying in your book that you feel that the sex preference is determined after birth. Do I understand that correctly? Yes, it's very important that we make that clear because there's been some unfortunate and confusing controversy uh, about that uh, based upon retrospective questionnaire type studies which can't really tell you what we've learned. There are really seven different varieties of these intersex children and they've been raised in different ways. You can have a, a normal uh, XY boy who has all the appearance of female genitalia. And if he's raised as a female, then he grows up to be a female. Excuse me, an XY boy who has all the uh, uh, appearance of what kind of genitalia? Of being a female. In other words, he has not developed a big penis. He has a vagina, uh, which hasn't closed. In other words, he has not restructured his organs because of an insensitivity to testosterone at the genital level. Well, what's his problem then? XY means what? Oh, well, well, he should be a male. XY means male. But he didn't become a male. Genetically, he is a male. And in fact, hormonally, he is a male. But he only developed female, female structures. This kind of kid is usually raised as a female. And it is a female that thinks of herself as a female and only is interested sexually in men. You can have the other situation where a normal XX female is born with ambiguous genitalia, somewhat big clitoris, looks like a penis, they sort of make a mistake and they decide that it's a boy. If it's raised as a boy, it grows up thinking it's a boy, only gets erections in response to seeing girls, and only wants to have sex with girls. And there are several other varieties of this. There's a the little boy, for example, born as a normal boy with a normal penis and at seven months of age gets a circumcision that's been done improperly and this happens and the penis, penis is burned off. And there are several cases, it's real tragedy. There's only one hopeful solution that was tried years ago, 20 years ago when this was first talked about and that is as long as he's lost his penis your only hope is to make a vagina for him surgically, raise him as a girl and hope that he will develop a female sensitivity. This and isn't what, your recommendation, is it? Well, wait a second, this is what's been done 25, 20 years ago. And the little boy with XY chromosomes has grown up feeling he's a girl, thinking he's a girl, and only being interested in having sex with boys. But if you try to do that after 18 months of age, you can't. If he lost his penis from an accident at, 30, at 36 months of age, and you try doing that, you can't. He is indelibly imprinted in his brain as being a boy. He just doesn't have a penis, and there's nothing you can do to make him think he's a girl or to be interested in having. Uh... All right. L let me let me see if I can ask. You. Let me see the the what are the consequences of what you've told us? Can let's pretend that I'm some that there were some psychotic czar uh, czar here. We, this is a terrible scenario, but but to make the point, you've got to do it here. After a baby boy is born, perfectly normal, mm -hmm. everything's normal. Are you saying that if you raise that boy as a girl with, with all of the parental input going, all the emotionality of those earliest years as though it were a girl, put pink dresses, but more than that, treat it like a girl, act like it's a girl, all of that, when that child with a penis and, a, and gonads and all of that and the prostate and testosterone gets to be 12, it will what? It will feel, that boy will feel that he is a girl and he can't shake it no matter what you do. There is nothing he can do about it, despite his genetics, despite his hormones, despite his physical anatomy. If you raise him as a girl, and it's, it's not important what you do to him when he's five years old. It's in the first two years, you indelibly imprint him as being a girl and he cannot shake it. And it's important to know that because from a... Uh, but it makes you crazy as a parent just hearing that because the first 18, you know what I mean? It, it sounds to me like that's the whole ball game. That, is, that certainly is in terms of sexual identity and gender identity and sexual preference. That is the whole ball game.